أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي شهري صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي مولانا سيد محمد نقوي My dear elders, brothers and sisters, Salaamu Alaikum. I would like to begin by wishing you all Eid Mubarak. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our du'as and all our amal during this holy month that has passed of Ramadan. We hope in some way that we have each gained spiritually for this hugely important month and that the spiritual recharge will help us in the year ahead. As many of you know, the World Federation conducts a plethora of projects throughout the world under three main departments, Islamic education, community affairs, and WF aid. Unfortunately, today I won't have time to talk to you in detail about the work of Islamic education, areas like Madrasa Center of Excellence, or community affairs, areas like marriage counseling, or, or Koja Heritage Project, or indeed about the landmark project North Star, which will restructure the World Federation. Brothers and sisters, today I want to focus instead on a snapshot of the work undertaken by WF aid the economic development and humanitarian arm of the World Federation. Whilst we celebrate Eid today, we cannot go without remembering the millions who are suffering around the world. Today, as we are about to enjoy later on a delicious biryani among friends and family, we see on the different part of the world war ravaging. We see in Syria, we see in Yemen, conflicts that create unimaginable suffering. In Yemen, 63% of the population are children, and the vast majority, 75% of them, are malnourished. There are 400,000 people who have died as a result of the Syrian war. From a population of 18 million, 11 million of that 18 million are displaced. And of that, 6 million are living in refugee camps. Similarly, in Iraq, there are over 500,000 internally displaced people as a result of the war inflicted by ISIS. Today, however, on Eid Day, we can be proud of our community's response. In the last two years, with your help and your support, the World Federation has dispersed over $2.6 million to help the Syrian refugees, with over $1.5 million spent in Iraq. A new project of $1.4 million for housing for internally displaced people in Iraq is being finalized and much more work is being done. During this holy month of Ramadan, after our prayers we recited a dua which was given to us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam which, which contains sentences like Allahumma agni kulla fakir, Allahumma asfi kulla jai, Allahumma aksi kulla uriyan, which means, O oh Allah, enrich every deserving one. O oh Allah, satisfy every hungry one. O oh Allah, clothe every unclothed one. And whilst we recited Alhamdulillah as a community, we did take some action. It was a great pleasure to witness the efforts of the Birmingham Jamaat here to fundraise for the annual Ramadan Relief Fund and I believe approximately 20,000 pounds was raised. Year in, year out, Birmingham Jamaat is a huge supporter of our community projects, and that is appreciated tremendously. The World Federation managed to disperse over $2.4 million in 20 countries, helping 200,000 individuals. Today, therefore, with your support, WF Aid has a revenue of close to 20 million pounds and is one of the leading UK British Muslim NGOs, if not the largest non-governmental Shia aid agency in the world. Together, we can do even much more. We must also make sure that whilst we work on international humanitarian causes, we also look at the domestic front as well. And not only in the UK, but wherever we live worldwide. That is why, for example, we have supported the food bank that was just opened by the Jamaat that has been organized in partnership with Hui Zusay. This kind of work in our society where we live is a great reply to the rising Islamophobia. If we can respond in such ways by doing more work for homeless, more work for hospices, more work for local deserving societies, then that will be the response that our Ahlul Bayt will be proud of. But brothers and sisters, 
While I have made you the case of continuing and increasing our humanitarian work in conflict zones, while I have made the case of the importance of working for our society, I must also make the case about the need to help our own Koja brothers and sisters, the need for inward investment. Whilst we're doing excellent work abroad, over 20 million as we said worldwide, we must realize charity begins at home. And today when we look at the Koja community, we see high levels of relative and absolute poverty. Allow me to share some examples. Today the economic situation in Tanzania is tough. We see the middle class struggling. We see many families unable to pay their housing expenses. And if they can pay their housing expenses, they're struggling to pay their educational bills. And if they can pay their educational bills, then they are unable to provide the health bills that come now and again. The same is said in India and Pakistan, where there isn't enough adequate housing and adequate education for our own community. Our institutions are doing a great job. Africa Federation has plans to build over 190 housing units in the next three years. The World Federation has committed over 450,000 for housing in Dar es Salaam alone. This will help, but it's only a start. In Europe and North America, there are many families who are struggling. There are families in London who cannot afford, who can only afford to eat meat only once a week. And there are families too here in Birmingham that need our support. We have an aging population, and we are glad that the Council of European Jamaats has taken a lead on seniors' housing, and we hope together we can deliver. To make this program of inward investment occur, and to build on the wonderful humanitarian work and domestic work we plan, we need to have a huge amount of focus, a clear strategy, great willpower, and a specialist team with key performance indicators. Only then can we achieve a consolidated impact for our community. After all, the leadership must set the goal of eradicating poverty in our Koja community. Yes, this is something we have spoken about for a number of years, but it's time we really need to get this done. For a community of our means, for a community of our resources, we have a strong duty to uplift our own people and this must be at the forefront of our leadership's minds and of our donors' minds. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in this endeavor of helping mu'mineen, as I said, in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, of helping us help our society here in Britain and in whichever country we live, and as a priority, eradicating poverty in our own community as well. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our maraje, to protect our scholars, to increase the tawfiq of all our volunteers, whether they work at the Jamaat or the regions or indeed at the Wealth Federations. And we pray most of all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam al hujja alayhi salam. I thank you for your time and I request you to recite a Surah Fatiha for all our Marhumi Al-Fatiha.